Hey, hello there. I'm glad you're taking time to listen to us talk about time. Okay? Jumping right in. Time. What is it? <clears throat> Keeping this short, sweet, simple, and sharp. In our text, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 15 and 16, See then that you walk circumspectly, that means carefully or diligently, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Our second text verse is in Colossians chapter 4 and verse 5. Walk in wisdom toward them that are without, those on the outside, those that are unsaved, redeeming the time. Now, I want to talk about time. There's a great deal that needs to be said about time to get a full understanding, but I don't have that kind of time in this video. I'll only say a little bit about time taken from that great deal that would take a long time. In the future, I may produce a long version of this topic, maybe soon. That is before too much time passes. Now, to define time, uh, most have said something like this. Uh, uh, the indefinite continued progress of existence and events in the past, present, and future regarded as a whole. But what about measurement of time? Century, decade, year, month, week, day, hour, minute, second, milliseconds, nanoseconds. I mean, you're getting down to one millionth of a second. I don't need to be that close. In searching the Holy Scriptures, we find that God established the measurement of time before man ever came into the picture. In Genesis, evening and morning were the first day. Day and night. Later, God speaks about days months, years. The purpose to measure out time specifically with God are six things is the seven feasts of Israel. Feast here is not eating, but it's uh, an appointment. So there's seven appointments God gives to Israel throughout Scripture, and we need, to, we need to understand those in order to understand much of the Bible. And uh, if we want to understand time especially. Now, God established time, and yet God is not constrained within time. God is not constrained by time. He's not confined within the measurement of time. Almighty God is the ever-existent one, the I Am, as we uh, very well know Him. Now, there's two verses I want to share with you. One is in 2 Peter chapter 3, and verse 8. Beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. Many have used that completely out of context to talk about a thousand years, and a day can be a thousand years, and, and that's not what it's talking about at all. Verse uh, Psalm 90 and verse 4 gives a little clearance on that, for it says, For a thousand years in thy sight are as but yesterday when it is past and as a watch in the night. Uh-oh, that watch in the night is four hours. So a thousand years to God is no more than a day or four hours or a month or a year or whatever. It's just simply telling us that God is not measured by time, neither does God exist within time. God is eternal from everlasting to everlasting. So that's the simplest way to put it. I, I like to do more on that on another video in the future, but future is about time, but not a specific time. So, ain't time interesting when you think about it? Now, allow me to give you just one further insight. When you get to the speed of light, time stands still. John 1 5 said, God is light. I hope that gives you an itch that you got to scratch and you can get into the Word. Passing of time. What does today mean to you? What does tomorrow mean? What about next month, next year? We talk about all those things. And philosophers wonder, are we moving through time or is time passing through or by us? Now, unlike Forrest Gump, there is so much that I have to say about that, but not at this time. That's it. When we think about redeeming time, who, who remembers S and H green stamps? If you do, you're like me, you're getting old. See, you, you go to uh, check out, a, say, a grocery store. And depending on the amount of money you spent, they give you so many green stamps along with your purchase. Put those in a book, 
save them up, go over to the SH stamp store, redeem them for some pretty nice items. Well, things haven't changed a whole lot because now we spend a lifetime uh, redeeming time for a paycheck. And then we take the paycheck and we redeem it for stuff. What about the spiritual side? Redeeming the time for spiritual rewards. Hope this makes you as uncomfortable as it does me to think about standing before the Bema judgment of Christ and giving account for how we spend or redeemed our time. Now we tend to act like time is a commodity or a tangible object. For instance, go with this one. Give me a minute, will you? I can't give you a minute, neither can you give me one. How long is a minute? How long is it? Well, it depends on which side of the bathroom door you're on. See, time is relative. Now, can you hold time in your hand? How much time will a bucket hold? Can I put some time in it? Wouldn't it be nice if we could bank time and then pull it out when we really need it? You know, you talk about, well, I'm, I'm saving time. And you drive like your hair is on fire. You get to a red light. You're sitting there and the, all the people you passed pull up alongside, look at you, kind of smile and shake their head. You know, or making up time. I've been on so many airline flights. We take off late and the pilot says, but that's all right, we'll still arrive on time because we'll make up time in the air. Well, make up time in the air, why didn't she just make up the time anyway? And then that one. Daylight saving time. Ah, this one I love to hate. Daylight saving time. You didn't save time, you just reset your clock. See, and that affects all of us. Won't you just get up an hour earlier, leave for work, and leave me alone and don't put me in that? I can't give you time, you can't give me time. Time is not tangible, time is not transferable. Now let's add all this together and hook it up. There's four times in the Greek text that we have a specific word that is used in our text verses for redeem. Now redeem appears many times from different Greek words, but there are four times this particular word shows up in the New Testament. One of the others is Galatians chapter 3 and verse 13. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is every one that hangeth on a tree. The very next chapter, chapter 4, verse 4 and 5. But when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth His Son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. Let me refresh your memory about the first two. Remember Ephesians 5, verse 15? See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time. Let me add a verse uh, on the end of that. Verse 17. Wherefore be you not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Now that brings us to time in relation to opportunity. Walk carefully, walk strictly, redeeming the time. The redeem idea is not to buy more time. We already have time. God gave that to us. What it's talking about, there's something about these four verses that stands out. Two of them are about Christ redeeming us. Two of them are about us redeeming time. Time to do what? Understanding what the will of the Lord is. Time to witness. Time to witness by our behavior, our lifestyle, our love for others, our, our conversation. In short, witness to others so that they can come to an understanding of redemption that is available to whosoever will. And that redemption is in Christ and Christ alone. One of the most important purposes in our life to use our time to worship God, to learn of Jesus, and then to lead others to the Father through the Son. So the big question comes down. What are you doing with your time? Wow, my time is done. Well, maybe sometime I'll take the time to tell you even more about time. But that won't be until later, which is about time. So until next time.